Now, let us talk about something called as this, uh, NCAP. NCAP is nothing but a new car assessment program. What NCAP, NCAP is like um, an external agency which gives, gives a rating. So supposedly, you know, a person is not satisfied with the, you know, extent of the safety in the car, even during the st standard test, even obviously the standard test is not foolproof. A uh, car can still, even after passing that, uh, car can still endure a heavy, heavy damage. What if a consumer seeks very good, uh, you know, safe, safe car? So then there are, lot of agencies in each in each country like uh, say for example this is the euro ncap latin ncap uh, australian ncap then the we have the us us ncap here then nhtsa then we have the global global ncap china ncap japanese ncap korean ncap and uh, also recently we have the bharat ncap also that has been started recently so what this is a step above the standard test so suppose a the car is um, tested at 60 kilometers per hour in a standard test. In an NCAP, it will be tested for 65 kilometers per hour. And even if the injury criteria is for example, you know, uh, X, it will be even lesser than X. So the idea is to make it more, more safer. The car will be more safer. Why now, why the car companies they would want to they will what they do is that they will uh, either these agencies contact the car companies and then they test their cars or the car companies itself approach these organizations and ask them to test these cars and then these ncap organization release a safety rating so suppose uh, if you recently have you if you heard these especially this global ncap it was in the news it tested um, uh, you know a lot of uh, car companies like uh, you know tata and mahindra and uh, they gave a four star rating to xuv and all uh, these um, uh, some of the newspaper articles have quoted because now what these comp car companies do they use it as an obviously a sales uh, technique that our car is uh, much safer it's a four star rating it's a five star rating and uh, at least in us and uk it holds a big value for you know potential customers to you know, with regard to the decision uh, to buy a car, so they they look at all these things with utmost importance. So just to give different kinds of uh, testing techniques are there. So if each uh, Euro and Cap, uh, American and Cap, have all these. Uh, their own uh, criteria, they have their own uh, testing methodology, their own uh, kind of, uh, you know, evaluating methodology. So all these things uh, are, are being done um, uh, for mostly most of the cars nowadays. And uh, each, uh, and also these organizations say, serve as a kind of, a, you know, a benchmark for other standard uh, uh, testing agencies, so that, you know, a certain kind of benchmark of safety is maintained in uh, all these cars. Here there is a pole impact for US and cap, just comparison between Euro and cap and US and cap. So here it is 50 kilometers per hour, 56 kilometers per hour, and the different kind of dummies. Here three dummies are used here, and here another three dummies are used here. So, and then you have in Euro and cap, you have uh, the these kind of uh, uh, impact where you impact in an offset. So basically this is to uh, show actually create a scenario where a car is crashed into uh, a half of a car half of the car uh, is crashed into another half of the car so this is to recreate that scenario and also you have uh, a moving barrier now this is a fixed barrier here and also moving barrier here so basically moving barrier is nothing but a platform in which uh, you know aluminium barrier is kept in front and then even that moves and moves uh, in the opposite direction of the car and both are made to impact and then the you know uh, everything is analyzed after that uh, so you that is there in euro and cap and now in us and cap it is a angle impact even if you see in uh, mdb is nothing but a moving deformable barrier so it is this car is stationary and the you know a barrier comes and impacts on this a car at a 90 degree angle here uh, again it is 90 degree angle it is also tested for an inclined the barrier comes and hits at an inclined angle so so many kind of test is done just to make sure that uh, you know in all kinds of scenarios as much as possible, you know, the car is uh, absolutely protected from you know, all kinds of um, crashes. 
All right. So talking about the frontal crash, we'll talk about the frontal crash. So basically there are um, the something called as a load path in a frontal crash. So frontal crash is uh, nothing but um, what you do is in an event of a crash, there are certain panels that are certain structures in the automotive which take up the maximum load. Their main objective, the main functionality is to deform, to absorb all the energy from the impact and crush, deform, you know, in a very a progressive way so that all the energy is absorbed. And it can so kind of like a like a cushioning impact to the occupant which is which is inside um, you know the uh, occupant cage. Which what are the two parameters that affect the occupant injuries? Which is the average deceleration. As I said, you know even the occupant should not endure a lot of g force, which makes the occupant you know uh, jump you know. He, uh, throw throw himself forward in a crash scenario when that also can cause a crash and also occupant in compartment intrusions so any part of the vehicle any part of the like a steering or the you know f front pad the pedal anything that can intrude into the occupant body so these are the two parameters that is very critical in the uh, in a frontal crash also the purpose of the test to evaluate the performance of the occupant uh, restraint system. So in a frontal crash, obviously the other than the structure of the car, what is most important is that how the airbag behaves and how the seatbelt behaves. And any crash worthiness of the car or the crash performance of a car uh, is determined by a combination of all these things. Not only about the structure, it's also about how the seatbelt behaves, the airbag behaves and how uh, all of these can be you know uh, tested or optimized together to give a optimum safety performance of the vehicle so suppose uh, there are two cases now one case is uh, you know vehicle impacts is with other object right and also an occupant as i said before the occupant uh, impact with the internal vehicles so suppose the dash or the ip or you know if that impacts so these are the kind of two collisions so vehicle impacting with another object will be uh, the effect of which will be borne by the vehicle alone so the vehicle behavior will be determined so after that only the second phase of that is how the occupant is impacted either by you know how the intrusions from the dash or the you know instrument panel or the steering or you know uh, uh, other um, objects which are nearby to the occupant so these are the things that uh, you know are very critical in a frontal crash so what are the what are the injury measures that we take what are the injury uh, criteria that we normally measure in a frontal crash is uh, nothing but uh, you measure the chest just g force the head injury criteria the femur loads that is the load on the leg on both the legs uh, the toe the feet the the chest deflection all these things cause um, you know have a separate uh, criteria i have a maximum value uh, which under which uh, what they have done um, studies is that if you cross that maximum value in the dummy injury, it is equivalent to causing a fatal injury or a very serious injury to an actual occupant. So that is the whole idea here. How to reduce the, how to measure the dummy injury value and to how, how to make sure, because obviously you want to make sure the dummy, uh, you know, uh, is experiences the least injuries as possible, least injury values as possible. The sensor of the dummy should not, uh, you know, get uh, detect much injuries. So basically, uh, in a frontal crash, uh, there are two things. In an offset frontal crash, the vehicle uh, is actually the vehicle structure. It's uh, it's only a part of the vehicle structure is exposed to the complete load. So it is much more demanding of the vehicle structure than an offset frontal. But in a full frontal, since the whole vehicle is impacted in a, suppose a vehicle runs into a wall, the complete vehicle structure on both sides, if you see, uh, you know, uh, both the rails and both the rails experience that load. So in a frontal crash, what happens is normally you have the front crash rail here, 
if you can see my laser pointer here it, it experiences uh, the first load here the bumper the bumper rail here it experiences the first load here so that uh, that gets deformed this gets deformed and then the load passes on here here to the a pillar here that is from here to the a pillar here that is one part of the load and another part of the road passes from here to the rock arm. So the idea is that you want to make sure most of the energy, that is, you know, most of the energy is absorbed in these these areas, and then after that, you know, some part of the load is going here, some part of the load is going here, and to make sure that the occupant is, you know, uh, the damage to the occupant is as minimum as possible. Obviously, as I earlier told you, the airbag and the restraint system, right? The airbag and the seat belt also plays a very crucial, uh, in, important role in actually cushioning the impact of the crash, right? So this is mostly about um, a frontal crash. And let's talk about side crash. Now, in a side crash, it's a little more complicated. Why? Because the crash happens on the side where there is not much distance between the occupant and the actual crash vehicle or the barrier, right? So there is a less amount of, there is no crash uh, deformation, uh, you know, parts that is there in the, uh, that is there in a frontal impact. In frontal impact, you have more long rails, you have the, you know, uh, other, other, so many other components which can take some of the load, deform and, you know, the crash is, the energy is just dissipated there, right? So, but in a side crash, it's more complicated, um, you know, because some of the, uh, the, all these structures come directly in contact with the uh, barrier and obviously, the, there's a very less distance between these structures and the occupant. So, but nevertheless, uh, uh, you know, the door, the B pillar, the rock, rocker panel reduce the intrusion here. So these are the, uh, this is a very critical um, crash. And you also, in, even in this also, you have uh, side airbags, you have uh, roof curtain airbags, uh, obviously, this is in very um, high-end vehicles. In cars like these, the Volvo here, it has a lot of um, additional, you know, airbags to even to cushion the impact of that. So there are other uh, reinforcement that can be put in the doors, inside the doors, uh, which can actually really take away some of the absorb some of the impact. So that's a side crash scenario. Now, then there is a rare crash scenario. Obviously, this is uh, simulating someone coming and hitting you from behind. So, and why is it much more, why is it uh, also critical? Because obviously the fuel tank is, uh, uh, you know, generally at the uh, back. So, you know, there's a chance that, you know, once if you hit it and you, there is any spillage from the fuel tank, so that obviously is very fatal and very dangerous. So that is one of the measurement criteria here. So what happens is uh, the, uh, in according to the test condition, then uh, there is um, a barrier, barrier which is impacted, which is uh, you know automated to hit the vehicle, uh, which is stationary uh, at a certain speed. Once the vehicle is hit, the crashed vehicle is uh, observed. How the crashes have uh, crashes crashes happen? How the crashes propagated? What are the intrusions? What are the um, what are the bent components that are there? If there is any damage to the fuel tank, so basically all these observations and studies are uh, made. And obviously, uh, in all these three crashes, front crash, side crash, rear crash, the data is taken. The these uh, the photos are uh, clicked the videos are taken there's a slow motion videos that are taken and then it has been studied it has been studied how the crash propagates i'm sure if you just uh, type in uh, youtube you can see plenty of crash videos where there are um, slow motion videos they show how the you know dummies are thrown forward how it is uh, you know how the um, you know crashes happen crashes propagating how uh, you know uh, so there's a huge, um, you know, uh, post crash study that happens um, so that, you know, how do you improve, how do you target what, the, what is wrong, what is, what is a design flaw, which uh, actually is causing a lot more, uh, you know, 
injuries to the um, occupant so so that is about uh, front rear uh, side and rear crash so as i said there are not only really, uh, other the main obviously is the main uh, front rear side crash and other crashes but also um, it is also important for the car to be protective or uh, it should not cause harm to the pedestrian also so even if you hit the pedestrian and the pedestrian if you see these images this is a crash image that has happened so even if you hit the pedestrian the pedestrian leg and the pedestrian um, head uh, actually you have some some kind of impactors uh, a, this is just an illustrative figure where you show the actual dummy being uh, you know hit by a car but uh, generally there are a lot of instrument uh, there is upper leg impactor there is a lower leg impactor there is a child head there is an adult head these are all instruments uh, these are just machines which actually record uh, which are just made to impact on different um, parts of the hood or the bonnet here right uh, they are just made to impact on because uh, generally to uh, represent whether the when the pedestrian when the car is hit uh, car hits uh, the pedestrian how it can um, how the head actually hits the bonnet and at whichever region the head impacts uh, the bonnet how the uh, head can be absolved of very serious injuries the reason because the there are under the hood obviously the engine is there engine is a very rigid very hard component so the idea is to make as much diff, uh, you know space between the hood and the inner components so obviously there is design limitations there is styling requirements see that that's the reason why this the, the car product development is a massive uh, uh, you know inter uh, interfunctionality uh, interfunctional inter department kind of exercise because you cannot take a, a suo moto decision of how you want the, the safety to be because whatever you suggest it may not be feasible for the other department there are a lot of other uh, criteria the in which in vh criteria the styling criteria the uh, packaging criteria so there are a lot of things that uh, you know um, you all of uh, the department people have to sit and discuss a middle way you know um, um, how you can you know forego certain things for you know to get the actual final requirement so as far as pedestrian uh, test is concerned the head, adult head is tested a child head is tested obviously for adult head the requirements are a little more relaxed but the child head the requirements are a little more lesser and you know so there are certain criteria which uh, obviously uh, you know uh, with regard to uh, these tests uh, there are certain uh, criteria just to make sure that uh, it is as as safe as possible for as uh, cushionable as possible for the even if uh, even if the impact happens the impact is not very fatal so that is the whole idea even for the adult head child head or both the upper leg and the lower leg so in, ad in addition to that as i said there is a rollover test that has been done so this is a very latest kind of a test uh, that has happened because actually developed in us in the us actually a lot of rollover accidents happened this has not come to india i think it's about to come to europe also but uh, these kind of rollover tests that is happening uh, which actually simulate how the car is uh, once it hits and it just rolls over and uh, how the occupant behaves inside it so that is a very um, new study obviously this uh, rollover test has been done in these in these years because obviously the kind of nature of road accidents have changed uh, or probably the, uh, the statistics indicate that the number of road accidents due to rollover is more fatal or uh, that needs to be studied more so obviously you know there are some uh, car companies have to ensure some more reinforcements on the roof uh, you know there are certain design changes that you need to make even to pass these uh, rollover tests so not only even 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 without the car also there is a testing done just with, with the dummies and the seats seats which are actually used uh, so the design of the seats that is also very critical here whether the headrest the headrest where uh, you know the uh, the 
dummy is seated whether that is giving a good support to the neck support to the head uh, i'm sure you guys have heard about whiplash whiplash is nothing but when there is a, a flexing of the neck when someone hits you from behind and it causes serious neck injuries uh, in that way so um that is something that uh, probably we need to work on uh whiplash is something uh, which is actually not um, you know uh, studied that uh, in detail but uh, it is something that probably features in every country's um, standard list nowadays so these are uh, among among the many other tests uh, i was uh, talking about these tests also